Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday morning. Listen, we have a lot to cover in this video. And you know, I try to do a 60-40 or 70-30 split, mostly focusing on the royal family. Unfortunately, almost this whole video is on Harry and Meghan. So if, if you're looking for royal family news, I only have one story for you. Let's jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. Queen Camilla went, we're starting with her obviously, she went to a community center in Cambridge. It's newly opened, it's called the Meadows Community Center. There were a lot of crowds when she got there. There were children, they handed her pictures. I mean, it was just fabulous. So she gets inside and she started talking to former Islander, Tasha Gorey, I hope I'm saying that correctly, and Strictly Come Dancing's Johans Radaby. Oh my goodness, you guys. Now there were a lot of, again, children there. It was really interesting. I, you know, I keep hearing these stories. The UK hates the Queen. They hate Charles. I don't see that when I see these kinds of receptions for her. Well, anyway, she gets inside and one of the first people she did meet before the other people was Catherine Johnstone. She is the CEO. So anyway, Camilla goes in, she meets, you know, all these people and they gifted her with a pair of tap shoes by the dancer um, Johan or Johannes. And he says, you know, dancing is a great way to stay in shape and keep moving. And while she was there, they promised to give her dancing lessons with the tap shoes. I think that's really cute. Okay. Anyway, this dance studio, which by the way, she also watched a dancing, um, I don't know, exhibition, but the dance studio, there's also a cafe there and it's run by the Royal Voluntary Service. And Camilla is the president of the Royal Voluntary Service. So she toured everything and to highlight the work that the charity does to support the health and well being of communities across the UK. There you go. She has been, Queen Camilla has been the president of the royal service there since 2012. Mm. This charity works in local communities, running companionship, lunch, social clubs, dementia services, all kinds of things. A big thank you to Remulade Sauce for showing us everything that she was wearing. Let's move on. Oh my goodness, the Jamaican Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, there's been such a row about Harry and Meghan showing up there. He's finally broken his silence and said, I feel, you know, I was happy to see them coming to participate in this event, but added, unsuspectingly, little did I know, I would be drawn into some internal issues in the United King, but so it is more publicity for Jamaica. What? For those who don't know, Jamaica is one of 14 non-UK realms where Britain is the head of state. Remember, he told William and Catherine on their tour that he was going to get out of there with them, but it's been two years and he hasn't done it yet. But let me tell you about the, the publicity for Jamaica. Everybody in the world is aware that there is travel advisories in place because of the crime and medical services in Jamaica. Home invasions, armed robberies, homicides are common. I certainly would not be bragging that this brought attention to Jamaica because now people don't want to go to Jamaica. And you should be aware, in case you're not, that Tanya Holness, who only worked for Harry and Meghan for less than a year, and then she quit because, the, you know, rumor was she was being used like a slave. Literally, they had her doing everything. She is related to uh, the Jamaican prime minister. Hmm. Moving on. Now, this article, we're going to be discussing about the deflection later, but this article is one of them. Harry and Meghan on the 14th of February to the 16th are going to be for the Invictus Games in Vancouver. I'm sure we'll see thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in outfit changes for Meghan. I'm sure they're going to fly on a private jet. They're going to stay in the most expensive hotel. I don't think people are loving Invictus anymore. Remember, they're running short of money, which is why Invictus on Twitter is asking for money, even though their bylines say they're not supposed to. 
All right, moving on. We all know that there's a lot of speculation. They have done nothing for Netflix in the last year. And I think Netflix has stepped in. That's my personal opinion. Just like with Spotify, they stepped in and pushed them and gave them all kinds of extra help to get their deals off the ground, to get their stuff off the ground, because Harry and Meghan can't do it. So now Netflix has come out and said they have a movie. We already know what that one is. It's Meet Me by the Lake. A scripted series and more unscripted content on the way. The Netflix chief content officer said um, they have a couple of unscripted things they're working on with Brandon Rieg, and they actually have a bunch in development. They have a movie in development, a scripted series, etc., etc. All very early development, but the movie's great, they said. Hmm. Now, keep in mind that when they were trying to push that animated series about Megan when she was a little girl, Pearl, keep in mind that that was in the early stages of development and it got, ha it got axed. So all of this stuff is in the early stages of development and yet their contract runs out next year. I, I mean, I don't know what they're doing. You know, they, they did do the live to lead, but um, it flopped. And they didn't even really do that. They bought it already finished, did a few little voiceovers and put it out, and it flopped. The only thing that they've actually put out was the six-part docu-series. And um, all it did was take swipes at the royal family. That was it. Now, I think the writing is on the wall, which is why all of their staff, their, their you know producers, their directors, they're all jumping ship. They see what's coming. We know that they had Pearl canceled. We know that the Spotify deal got canceled. We know that Harry's book was actually a financial flop for Penguin Random House. Their Netflix docu-series took a hit. People are making fun of them. The Heart of Invictus didn't do well. And Archwell, except for one year, isn't bringing in money. People are saying they're not going to watch any more docu-series. We know they've had cameras following them all around, taping them, because I think they're going to do another docu-series on themselves. Frankly, I think the head of Netflix has become a figure of fun for being so stupid to give them that contract. Okay, moving on. All right, let's move on to this story. This is a big story. So there was a congressional social media hearing and Harry, I just want to point out, Harry and Meghan had nothing to do with this hearing, setting it up, being involved, nothing, okay? So they brought in Mark Zuckerberg and Evan Spiegel. These are the people that, was, that are over Facebook and I believe Snapchat. These two people apologized, stood up at some point and apologized to people who were harmed by their platforms practices. Apparently, they received um, nudity. Uh, Spiegel apologized because some of the kids uh, bought drugs on Snapchat and, and passed away. I mean, I, it's just all these horrible things that happened on social media. But again, this meeting had nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. They were not responsible for the meeting. They had zero, okay? But I do think it's important to know that this meeting took place. So it's at this time that Harry and Meghan, as they usually do, have latched themselves on to another cause and are trying to make it all about them. And they said, and I'm, they put out a statement and they said, the best parenting in the world cannot keep children safe from these platforms. And they ended their statement with a quote from a father whose child was affected by the harmful aspects of social media. If love could have saved them all, all of our children would still be here. But I guess my point is, why are they once again attaching themselves to something else? They never do anything for themselves. So doing as they usually do, they attach themselves and try to make it seem like they were responsible for everything that happened and whatever. So they put out an, a, a statement on Archwell and um, talked about, you can see it for yourself, you can freeze it and read it. But basically what they did was they shared support. They put out a apology from social media, Mark Zuckerberg and Spiegel. And it says, we applaud the bravery and determination of the thousands of parents around the country whose advocacy resulted in this hearing. Yes, 
It was the parents whose advocacy got the hearing, not Harry and Meghan. Then, of course, they turned the whole thing to themselves. It went on how their foundation recently met with families and is trying to provide a support network for children's mental health, blah, blah, blah. And then they put out what you're about to watch. Once again, they turn the entire thing to themselves. It's us. We did this. And the whole thing shows Megan in that very inappropriate, off the shoulder. I mean, this is the, I've talked about this in my other videos. She should have been wearing like a business suit. You know what I'm saying? Like a back pants suit. She likes to do the off the shoulder thing. I think she thinks it's sexy. She doesn't know when she should be business-like in her clothing. She needs a stylist. But anyway, just watch this. When the car was first invented, there wasn't a seatbelt. And what happened? People started to get hurt. People started to die. So you started to change the car. We need to get out of this idea that you know, young kids, there's something wrong with them. It's, no, it's, it's the world that we're allowing to be created around them. Please stop sending children content that you wouldn't want your own children to see. Everyone now is affected by the online world and social media. There is an entry point that's positive in creating community, but we all just want to feel safe. Of course, I have to point out, she's talking about how people are dying in cars next to her husband, whose mother was killed in a car crash. And of course, this picture shows up of her holding Archie with no seatbelt in the back of a moving car. Right. Now, I have said multiple times that the last people that should be talking about online abuse and hate are Harry and Meghan when their own fan base hurls death threats at people. This one is a perfect example. When it was brought to Harry and Meghan's attention that this person running this account, who they had called to thank for her fundraising efforts, was part of a hate campaign against his family, Harry and Meghan said, we don't know her, we don't know anything about this, no comment. At which time this particular Sussex Squad fan threw them right under the bus, saying, how did they tell the world they don't know me when they called me on my own private phone number? Exactly. Now, I have to agree with, according to Taz, maybe they should have said something about the atrocities being committed at the African Parks charity. I think that this statement they put out, I think hearing from Netflix, all this is all a diversion so that you won't be talking about the fact that Harry and Meghan have known what was going on since May of last year and did nothing about it. You want to see another diversionary tactic? Archwell put out a statement, another statement to help, you know, divert your attention. This is from when they accepted the award for structural racism in the royal family from the Kennedy Association. Remember the, uh, the award that they took and then they turned around and said the royal family wasn't racist? Well, they put out this whole video statement. Now, I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but here's a few little snippets I think you might want to hear. The enduring dream of Robert F. Kennedy, of a just and peaceful world, is so much more than a simple hope. It's a direct ask, an explicit challenge, a call to action, a test of individual courage and collective spirit. And his appeal to humanity is as relevant today as it was in 1966 when he stood before the University of Cape Town, a place we've visited and hold close to our hearts. Notice the use of bud words, a call to action. And remember, they went to Cape Town, a place close to their hearts. Mm hmm He sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And he also said, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression. Hmm, the ripple effect. Have I heard that before? School. And that alone creates a ripple effect for your entire You don't have that ripple effect. Unless, yes, it is about the ripple effect, but what I remind us, it's the ripple effect. All right, let's move on to the next thing Harry said. And as we all face a complex and challenging time in the world, we choose a path of optimism, of care for each other and our communities. Wow, optimism and caring for our communities. Too bad he's not caring too much for those people in Africa. You guys should also know that this was taped before the Spotify deal went bye-bye. Listen to this. And whose stories challenge some of the very archetypes that continue to try to hold women back today. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. She was plugging archetypes. What do you know? Now, as if those videos aren't enough, Archwell just put out another 
another video talking about their service is universal and we can do so much together. And I was shocked by the pictures they used. Let's look at some. So one of the ones they showed was the baby to baby. So what they did with this one was they didn't collect the supplies. They didn't package the supplies. They showed up, handed out supplies for 20 minutes, brought their own professional photographer who took pictures and then they left. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. And they went there on a private jet. And rumor has it that they asked Baby to Baby to pay for the private jet. And Baby to Baby said no. There are also pictures of Megan with her hair up because she was merching the mask. The next photo they chose to use was from where they went to one of the poorest schools in Harlem wearing half a million dollars in jewelry. And we found out later on that the children were made to sign NDAs through the parents because what they were really doing was pushing her book. This picture was where they did the vaccine equality thing, you know, in Central Park, where they took credit for all these vaccines that were raised. The company that they were doing it for came back at them and said, no, 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 and hasn't spoken with them since. And on the same weekend, they went to the 9-11 Memorial. Remember, Megan went to the 9-11 Memorial wearing her blood pinky diamond. Uh-huh. How about these pictures from Nelson Mandela Day where Harry spoke and the room was empty? You guys remember that? And that was the day that Megan grabbed his arm and Harry looked so upset. You guys remember that? It was a joke. This is another PR thing. Look at us. Look at all the good we do in the world. Remember, they only work an hour a week and the money that they donate is other people's money. These two have yet to give a penny of their own money. Not a dime. And nobody's falling for this diversionary tactic. You guys know what to do. Comments make them good. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, double check. Make sure you are still subscribed. Don't forget the links for the Patreon or my father's book are down in the description box. If you've donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.